Ladies and gentlemen, so happy to have this next guest back on the show. She is one of the most exciting women's fighters, UFC fighters, MMA fighters out there. Uh, one of the nicest, too. She is a former title contender, I think soon to be a title contender. Again, just a winning fighter with a winning personality. And uh, we're so happy to have her back on. They call her the phenom, Felicia Spencer. Welcome back to the show, Felicia. Well, thank you. Quite an introduction. It's great to be back on. Well, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And, and I, I mean it, and it is an accurate one. So we're happy to have you. So, Felicia, so much going on in the world of MMA. This last year was uh, pandemic fighting. I don't think you fought during the pandemic, or was your last fight in the beginning of the pandemic? Uh, it was in June, so not in the very... It got postponed from May to June. That's so, right. Um, so it was kind of, you know, in there a little bit. <laughs> and was that at the Apex in Vegas or at Fight Island? It was at the Apex. Um, Fight Island was uh, like shortly after is when they started going to Fight Island. That makes sense. And it seems like that's been going on all year. Apex Fight Island, Apex Fight Island. Yeah. Apex. Would you have any preference as to where your next fight would be if it was again going to be with no fans either at the Apex or Fight Island? I mean, there's pros and cons. Apex is going to be an easier transition. The, you know, my team, everyone, you know, just an easy transition. It's only three hour difference, you know, obviously the same country. Um, but if I had like an opportunity to go to Fight Island, that would be a once in a lifetime kind of feeling for me. So as much as like maybe one of my coaches or all of my coaches might not want to do the trip, it'd be like, all right, let's do it, guys. Like, yeah. This is a really cool experience for everybody. And there's a lot more that goes into it, like a lot of, you know, just a lot of planning and preparation for just like the time change or like when you're going to fight, all that good stuff. So I would definitely love to go to Fight Island though. Just Very the cool. Experience. Absolutely. Are you one that watches the embeddeds when they have for the big pay-per-views? They've got those six short videos. And if so, did, did you watch some of the embeddeds for some of the Fight Island big events? Um, I haven't recently, but I, I usually am kind of more on top of the, on that kind of media. Um, but yeah, I watched, the first couple um or at least you know uh, you know sporadically and it looks like such like they take such good care of every person on that in that area and just the facility itself is like a vacation you know so i mean not that i would treat it like a vacation but just being there is like astonishing it looks like anyway it really seems that way have you ever taken an intercontinental flight like 10 plus hours or 15 hours before not that long. You know, my, my longest flight was probably six or seven hours. Yeah. So I've gone to, to, to Europe. I went to France. So that was the longest one. Very cool. I'm sure you could handle it. Do you have any idea what you do? Are you the type of person that could sleep on the plane? Or do you think you'd be working out or stretching? Or what do you think your game plan would be? Um, I can I can sleep. I probably wouldn't sleep that long. I play a lot of Sudoku on planes. Um you know, I saw, I don't remember who did it, but someone had like a full workout. Um, I think it was Marion or I don't know who, who it just was that I saw. Sarah I McMahon. I think Sarah it. McMahon. I think it was Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, yeah Marion's about to fight. Sarah just did that and post like, you know, there was a whole big thing. Not a big thing, but I never would have even occurred to me to do a workout. Like, how do you do a workout on a, I guess if it's a chartered flight, it'd be maybe different. I've never been on a flight that wasn't just economy you know allegiant or something really right cheap. so uh, there's not much room for a workout in those seats otherwise but she made it happen see. she really did yeah 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 sarah's awesome. a super nice person Do, have you ever had any interaction with her no but I, I can you can tell you know from her interviews that she's just a down-to-earth human <laughs> she really is in that yeah. fight did you watch the fight with her and juliana I did. Yeah, that was an interesting fight. Yeah, let me ask your opinion. I I am not a hater against any opponent, but you know, Juliana seems like a decent person. She is somewhat controversial. She's had some weird stuff going on in her career, whereas Sarah is just super sweet and nice and also I've had a chance to interview Sarah on a few occasions. So I was really cheering for Sarah, I'm not going to lie. Um and I was so impressed 
with what she did in that first round. She she was the better wrestler. I, I, I didn't wrestle. I've been grappling for years, but I, I wasn't a wrestler. But I have some of my jiu-jitsu friends that wrestled for many years, all city, and one was like uh, 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 close to All-American. And I asked their opinion, and they said, you know, in the first round, Sarah was bouncing on her feet. She was moving. She was cutting angles. She was shooting low, and everything was like really on point. And they said in the second round, it looked like it was all gone. She wasn't getting low. It, Juliana didn't even have to sprawl to stop her takedowns. It just looked like she was gassed. Like, like something happened after that first round that she was done. And um, this is not a criticism on her. Shit happens. And it's a long flight. Yeah. And she's 40 years old. I understand being I'm a little over 40 myself yeah. now, a 15 hour flight. I'm not a pro fighter, but I probably an eight year old girl would be able to beat me up after a 15 year old flight <laughs> because I'm that old, you know, um, it just would be tough. Um, what do you think? Do you think that is something that that could have had that effect on her? Or did you see anything as as a high level UFC women's fighter that could have happened in that first round that that put a finish to that Sarah McMahon that we saw in that first round? Um, you know, like in the great analysis by you and, and the people around you, like she had a phenomenal first round and, you know, it didn't even occur to me that maybe just the, the travel experience could have like weighed on her and that's definitely possible. I mean, only she'll know or if she'll even know, like who knows really. Um, you know, there's also credit to Juliana, maybe just her pace, like, Actually, a friend of mine mentioned that Juliana is just very, like, feisty, and Sarah is not used, maybe not acclimated to deal with how feisty she is. And then it maybe kind of just that maybe played a big part of, you know, what happened in the second round. Uh, so just, like, the, just the styles make fights. Like, like, every fight can go, you know, differently. Like like I said, I always say MMA math doesn't, doesn't work because styles make fights and, like, Two fighters are always going to have a unique experience. So, yeah, maybe just uh, a combination of all of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? And also, I know that the older athletes get, the more prone they are to injuries. And unlike a basketball game where, like, you're probably not going to have too much tax on your on your upper body, your, your knees and your legs will be hurting probably. But in fighting, you're, you're doing so much and there's so much explosion. Is it possible that at 40, not that she's old and decrepit at 40 and she's an amazing yeah. physical specimen, right? But is it possible yeah. that she, in that first round, she strained a muscle or twisted her ankle or something like that? I mean, like you said, anything really could could be possible. I mean, I mean, you know, as an athlete and put your body through so much and it, it just gets harder and harder, you know, as you get older and I'm not 40, but I can imagine that it gets, yeah. you know, tough tougher to come back from those you know at the same time like in a fight a lot of the time like those small things don't impact as much because of the adrenaline but also maybe because she's such an experienced competitor the adrenaline doesn't always impact you the same either so the adrenaline that helps people like overcome those little brains or little discomfort for some cases like maybe if you don't have that adrenaline that the nerves or anything then maybe it's not helping you in that way so it's always like pros and cons of is this good is this bad you know so, yeah uh, yeah that's it. um definitely a lot that you could look at and maybe she'll be able to speak on it better <laughs> yeah absolutely we had a good comment by one of our uh one of our fans with a unique <laughs> a unique handle but he is making a positive comment here and he says that you are a great canadian role model not like the blood hunter who i guess is a pro wrestler so, oh. I don't, you know, but you. yeah, she says, thank you. You got that. Thank you, uh, doctor. And uh, we appreciate that. The blood hunter, I guess, is probably a heel in wrestling. So Felicia, not a heel for sure. So, um, you know, definitely appreciate it. Uh, so I try to play, I try to play like at the gym. I try to like, you know, sort of like talk shit or like, you know, play the heel. Like I'm going to turn heel. And then it's a big running joke at the gym. Like, Secretly, I'm like actually like a jerk at the gym, and I, you know, mean to my partners, and 
one of them is going to come out one day and say that I'm just like a horrible person. I love it. And all of a sudden you turn heel in the UFC. Yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be really interesting. Like if I could pull that off, that'd be epic. But I don't know if I can keep a straight face for any of it. So. It's tough. You're such a nice person. Yeah. You know, I have a feeling it might be tough, but you can do it if you want to do it. You know what I mean? And uh, it would be interesting yeah. to see. It'd be interesting to see. So what's yeah. going on? You're in talks for some fights. I'm sure it's really nothing that you can talk about. Or is there a list of opponents you could give us a hint? That we might be looking at you know i wish i i wish i had more of a clue um you know i just i you know i've told the ufc that i'd like to you know i'm ready to to get something lined up you know i mean they don't they don't uh share much until they're ready to like offer right <laughs> so it's not like uh because if, if there was a list of our i would have already said yes to somebody you know? yeah <laughs> so, absolutely uh, yeah so it's you know, at the same time, I'm not like in a huge rush. You know, I, I told them I wanted to wait until 2021, which is obviously here now. But I'm just having, I'm really enjoying training. I'm really feeling like, a, I, always, I always feel like I'm leveling up, but like, I really feel like I'm leveling up this time. Like, there's just so many, so many things that I've adjusted. Um, and just like the way that I train, I guess, and just like a new perspective. And then just like, just like my life as a whole, I just feel like I've kind of made a turning point with just like perspective and how to approach things and, you know, just being ready. So um, I'm enjoying training, you know, and I'm feeling better than I ever have. So I'm ready to, to get back in the win column when, whenever they're ready to have me. Very cool. Well, you look great and you sound great. And, you know, you've already proven yourself as a as an amazing uh, contender at featherweight. Pretty much arguably the two best featherweights in the world have been the only ones uh, to beat you. So that stated, I know anyone uh, trying to talk to you about bantamweight would deserve a reaction like, what the hell? I've only lost to the two best featherweights. Why am I now a bantamweight? But I'm not going to be that guy to try to push that. But let me ask, has there ever been any more thought about you getting super skinny and, uh, and trying to go against those girls at 135? Yeah, not, not really. You know, I, I feel healthy and I feel like, you know, just, my, I just feel like my body type is, is, just the way it is, you know, like I even, you know, back I, when I would try to eat, you know, like way less calories and it just, it just doesn't, uh, you know, everyone has a different body type and I'm, I'm fine with mine. And, you know, um, like I said, I told the UFC cause they, you know, they, they offered me a band and fight and I was like, Hey, I'm still a better way, but you'll be the first to know if I can make band and weight, I promise. Um, you know, if, if, my body changes and that happens, you know, over time bodies change and things change, but right now definitely not in the cards for me. So. And you're what? 29 now? 28? I'm 30. I just turned 30 in November. <laughs> Happy birthday. Still a young puppy, still a young puppy. And three is my lucky number, by the way. So you are finally in the decade that you have the powerful lucky three number uh, in front of you. <laughs> Right. And still still a young puppy. So you're training over there in Florida under the under the tutelage of um, the the silverback. What's his name again? I forgot. Uh, Seth Petrozelli. Seth and the, the yeah. two head coaches at the gym. Yeah. Excellent. And, and I think I may have talked over you after you said Seth Petrozelli. What's the name of the gym over there? Uh, the Jungle is the name of the gym. And Mike is also uh, one of the one of the head, the head coach at the gym as well. Mike and is that is Mike uh, your significant other? No, 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 Mike. I actually knew Mike Lee when I was like twelve. Um, he was running like the adult uh, jujitsu program when I was training back in the day. Uh, Todd is my husband, uh, but he's he's usually in my corner, and you know we we train at, at the same gym, and we met there and everything. So. Nice. Do you ever get any good? Do you ever but, get? I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I would say, fun fact, Mike Lee's, my, our coach, his mother actually married Todd and I because she's a, a minister. Oh, that's awesome. And my, she didn't come, or we had a very, very small wedding, so we laughed. We had like six people at our wedding, just our immediate family. And so we laughed at, you know, Mike, oh, your mom got to come to our wedding, but you couldn't, you know, because she married us. That's funny. So we <laughs> I like that. It's a cool fact. Let me yeah. ask you, let me ask you, how often... 
does Tyler come in as a training partner in a pinch? Have, do you guys have an agreement that if something happens where there's just not enough bodies or there's no bodies down at the gym and, and can you call Tyler? Is he, is he agreeable to being a training partner in a pinch or is that something that's not a written fact or is it something that he actually doesn't want to do? Um, it's Todd, but that's fine. Um, oh, Todd, I'm so sorry, Todd. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> um, you know, we we train together. Um, we we more so drill together. Um, there's so we have so many bodies, but you know, we we know how to work together. You know, he's a he's a bit bigger than me, so there's always like that factor of like I don't want to get hurt, especially in fight camp. So we're more prone to like work together when I'm not in fight camp, just because there's always that that one freak accident that could happen with a bigger body. But, um, no, we, and when I'm in camp, uh, more like grappling, that kind of thing, where I do more with him on a regular basis, the sparring and stuff, like, you know, he's, uh, just not the body type that I'm always looking for. So we don't go that often, um, like live going, but we, we drill all the time. Like we were just doing, you know, like kickboxing class, like we'll, you know, partner up and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, we have fun. We have fun uh, in the gym together still. So. That's cool. Do you ever, this is a funny, silly question, but do you ever find like if you're cuddling with him that you feel like going for an arm bar or a choke and you do it <laughs> and you do it just for the hell of it? Um, not when we're sober. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. He says I'm a little too feisty when I, you know, when we're enjoying drinks and stuff, but uh, not usually. We, we're pretty good at leaving that at the gym or um, he likes to pretend like if we're at the gas station or at the supermarket, like if I like grab him or get like a little half hug or something, he'll like throw himself into like a bad position and be like, Oh, like I'm beating him, you know? Nice. <laughs> so nice. It's very, uh, he thinks it's hilarious. You That's know, funny. To be, a, to be in that position. Um, That's, it's, it's funny. <laughs> that is, you know what I remember seeing on YouTube? I think this was made maybe like five or six years ago. There's a crazy video on YouTube where Kayla Harrison, the PFL champ who also recently has in, competed in one and in, in, uh, Invicta, I think. Um, and she, I think did this with one of the guys from Jackass or something. It was really kind of weird. It was almost like a little bit cringeworthy, but you have a, the setup where like this guy is apparently some kind of like a jerk and he's constantly like walking over her and trying to get her to, interact and she's like throwing him every time and it's like kind of brutal i mean obviously he's aware of what's going to happen but like i was saying it's a little cringy because it's almost like some of the people are looking horrified because she's literally throwing this guy almost full power on the ground and oh. she's a big girl have you ever seen that uh, video yeah. No, is it like in public? Like people don't know what's yes. going on? Yes, it was at like some party, some like huge outdoor party. And he'll get thrown on the ground hard and then she'll walk away somewhere else and he'll run back over to her and go, hey, listen, Kayla, I'm telling you, I got it. And then she'll grab him and throw him hard again. It, it's really <laughs> kind of bizarre. And the people are horrified, like especially like the women are looking like, what the hell? You know, yeah. it's good. It's, yeah, no. No, that's funny. Yeah, it's kind of odd. What do you think of Kayla? That's a big, strong girl there. And I think uh, she made 45, uh, and she put a beat down on this other girl. You probably did watch that. I think that was in Invicta. And uh, that was a bloody matchup. And she, you see when they pulled her off, she kind of made that weird face that they freeze-framed at first, kind of like almost like a cringe face. She's like, what the hell? They're going to, you know... Yeah. What do you think? That's like, that's almost like a little bit tough to see. A, uh, and I know women don't look at this as much as men, but it's almost tough to see a woman just bloody beaten to a bloody pulp like that by someone much stronger than her. It's almost like, wow, I don't know. That's just a yeah. lot, you know. What do you think, um, what do you think uh, of uh, of that last fight with Kayla? And, and at 45, that would be a hell of a fight uh, with you. Have you ever thought of that matchup with her? Oh, I mean, every 45er, of, you know, it's always in the, in the card. So um, it's an exciting fight. You know, she's not signed, you know, with the UFC. Right. I'm sure one day that'll happen, you know. Um, she's an exciting fighter. I mean, there's, you know, she, she got put with a featherweight that's 
you know, I like uh, she fought Courtney King, I believe. Yeah. You know, she's an up and coming girl. You know, she she showed some good things in the beginning, but once you know, once you kind of get that to that point where you've taken like some serious damage, sometimes just you know, I've been there. Like sometimes just the rest of the fight is just survival mode. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I feel for her, but uh, she showed some some good stuff in the first round, like defensively, and then. Like you said, it just kind of all went downhill pretty pretty quick and stayed there. But you know, she I don't think she got technically finished, or was it the very last round? Maybe. Um, I think so. I think they way. stopped in the last round. It, yeah. I, they, yeah, I think they did actually. So, um, yeah, I mean, good for her, you know, for sticking it out. And I hope that they have her back, you know, to to give her some more experience. You know, Kayla obviously is a very experienced competitor. She's already like eight and zero now. Um, so the, you know, and it's not Kayla's fault that they didn't have someone more experienced for her to compete against either. It's like, we're kind of in a, a division where it's just like, you take what you can get. So, um, I have a lot of respect for Kayla, but like anyone, you know, I, I always am seeing the ways I can win. So, you know, well, I'd love to see Kayla go I mean, I'm looking forward to the next, um, PFL tournament. I saw some new names on there, uh, you know. Just it's just always fun to watch people like around the weight class and just people doing well. You know, it's you know good for everyone doing well. It's good for the sport. It's good for the division. It's good for everybody. So. Without a doubt, absolutely. And do you mind if I pick your brain about a few other fighters in your division? Is that cool. All right. So coming up, two uh, women that you have fought before: Megan Anderson, yeah. right, and uh, and Amanda Nunes, and. Uh, the odds are big in favor of Amanda. Uh, if you look at uh, MMA math, you know, you fought them both. One of them should completely crush the other one, um, <laughs> right? But I want to ask but. you, how, do, yeah, how does that fight unfold? Um, is there any chance? And, and, you know, this is thinking, I guess, like, like a fan, uh, not like a real fighter, but like a fan might say, what if, Amanda says to herself, you know what? I'm just going to stand with this girl just to make it fun. I'm not even going to try to take it down. Is there any reason, is there any possibility that Amanda would make that decision to say, I'm only going to stand with a striker like this? And, and, and how does this fight play out? Um, I, I wouldn't say that that would be her... I wouldn't say that Amanda would make that decision to to limit half of her game, you right, know, to right. only stand. I think that would be um, – I don't think that's in, in her personality, fighting style, or, or her coach's right. style to, to win. Like she always says, you know, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to win. And sometimes it's standing and sometimes it's on the ground. Um, so I don't see that happening. But as, you know, I always say, like I said before, styles make fights. and <laughs> Oh, sorry for my dog. That's okay. Um, and, you know, I can definitely see the fight going either way, honestly. Obviously, Amanda has a lot of um, tools. She's it's dangerous everywhere. But, you know, Megan is a different type of fighter, too. You know, she hasn't really fought anyone with that stature. Um, and sometimes it's just that what it always comes down to is just who is going to make the better decisions in the right moment and again things can change with one punch like once someone gets damaged mindsets change hesitation start you know all the things that just pile up um that can affect the fight so you know once you just start to take damage or or if you second guess yourself it changes the whole fight so you know you could land something and and um and pull it off you know and and Honestly, I'm kind of <laughs> as much as I respect both, you know, both women. Obviously, men is the champ. I'm thinking in my head, like, let's go, Megan. Like, yep. if Megan wins, that really sets up a nice, a nice little uh, interesting featherweight division uh, triangle that we have. And you know, does does Amanda vacate her bantamweight title, or is she going to go defend it? And maybe I'll rematch Megan, or who knows what could happen? You know, so that would be a pretty cool, you know, twist if uh, Megan pulls it off. So I'm um, kind of uh, cheering for her as much as I'm, I just want it to be a good fight, you know? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I, you know, maybe let down some 
you know, my own expectation for putting on a, a really exciting fight with Amanda, you know, obviously things, um, you know, things just didn't go the way I planned and, and that's fine. You know, I've accepted that. And, uh, but again, every fight is different and it, it, and Megan has, Amanda has amazing coaches. Megan also has amazing coaches. And I think that those, you know, the, the mindset, the game plans, like all of that comes into play and it's, you know, it's those two women in the, in the octagon, but they have all that coaching and all that, the strategy behind them, you know, on the outside of the cage too. And uh, every time Amanda fights, everyone else learns from that. So, you know, even my last fight with Amanda, Megan's team can look at that and, and draw from it and, and, you know, see openings. That's why being a champ is so hard, hard to keep that belt because everyone's, everyone's analyzing everything you do or don't do in order to beat you. So it's a, it's always interesting for me and I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it could really go either way. Absolutely. Very well, very well put. And uh, I think it's going to be interesting also. It's funny because on, on the one side, you can see a replay of the Jermaine Durandamy fight where, where Amanda just takes Megan down eight or 10 times. Um, the only difference is that, uh, is that um well actually not a ton of difference the height is a difference and maybe maybe a jermaine being a little bit more of experience and jermaine jermaine seeming to get her grappling on a little bit more and was able to kind of throw up some triangles and do some other things on her back which maybe megan may or may, may not do but obviously there's a possibility that we may see a replay of that fight but it's also possible that we don't and uh i kind of think like it seems like against these fighters that are in the goat category that people put, you know, uh, Amanda in and, and Habib in, it seems like a lot of fighters uh, uh, are very tentative against them. And just the whole strategy looks like they're in there trying not to get slaughtered like a lamb. Now, you didn't go in like that. You went in attacking and looked really competitive and fought your heart out. But, I mean, like, my thought almost might be, with Megan being six feet tall, that is an unorthodox, crazy height for a woman's fighter. And even though Jermaine was 5'9", she was two inches taller than Amanda, or an inch. I think she was maybe like an inch or an inch and a half taller, 5'9 and a half. I think Megan's going to be like four inches taller than Amanda. Uh, and so... My thought almost is that maybe Megan should like go out there for the kill. Maybe like as soon as that bell rings, Megan should just like not run across the ring, but just like start throwing like a windmill of stuff at her to try to knock her head off. Because I think that might surprise Amanda. But then on the flip side of it, if you start advancing really quick toward the better wrestler, right, they're just going to duck under and can easily take you down. Um, but I don't know. I mean, like, is there is there such a thing as a fighter's camp and a fighter thinking we want to make a statement right away we want to go in there right away and get this girl's respect immediately does that is that ever a strategy or what do you think and what do you think about the fact that maybe should megan try that could that be effective i mean i think it is a, a strategy that a lot of fighters have used you know in the past um there have been some a lot of like Especially like flying me right off the bat. I've right. seen so many times, obviously, like the famous one with um, Jorge Masvidal. Yep. Um, or like Kat Zingano trying to do the flying knee on Ronda. Yep. Like sometimes it well, sometimes it doesn't. Right. So right. it's always like the risk. And those are the two examples for like the best case and the worst case scenario. Uh, so yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a strategy that like people employ. And, um, it's something that I don't, I don't know if that would be something that Megan does. I feel like she's pretty um, calculated Methodical. in her fights. Yeah. So, or she wants, you know, that's her aim to be and her coaching kind of, or, you know, her James is, uh, seems that way, like not like super risk heavy. So I don't know that they would. And like you said, maybe it wouldn't be necessarily the best idea, but like I said, it all comes down to like, is that the, the decision that she makes? And then also, what decision does Amanda make? Is it going to be like too late or too, you know, it's, uh, it, it could always go differently every time you do it. Even in training, it's like every time you do the same move, it always looks a little different and always has a different outcome. So uh, that's why it's so exciting. And that's why, um, you know, that's why we all do the sport and 
you know, trying to get to the top because even people who fail at first, you know, like things change and they make better decisions as they go forward and, and they get there. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good opinion. Question for you. Are you the only woman that has fought both Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunez? Um, no, I think um, Holly Holm might be the only other one. That's right. That comes to mind, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so one of two. With, with Cyborg. Um, gotcha. Yeah, you know, not with Amanda, but uh, I think she's the only other one. Okay, so let me ask you this. I think this is a really interesting question. I think that a lot of people would like to know, and you are obviously one of two women qualified to discuss this. <laughs> On one side, you have the people that say Amanda beat Cyborg the same way 10 times out of 10. On the other side, you have people say that that was realistically a fluke and Cyborg beats Amanda 9 times out of 10. I think the reality might be more in the middle, but I'm dying to hear your thought that if they got to fight each other on an even playing field with proper notice and nothing weird going on with either either one of them uh, with their contracts or anything, uh, now that Cyborg knows how hard Amanda can hit and now that Cyborg knows Amanda wouldn't be intimidated by her because she didn't know that going into that fight and she had just been you know a killer, although you did fight Cyborg really tough. But what is the reality in, in the mind of the phenom Felicia Spencer if those two women fought each other 10 times in an equal ground? What might be the results? Who wins how many times? I think uh, I'm gonna go with you. Like, I think it'd be much more in the middle. Like, there would probably be like a six and four ratio instead of a fifth, you know, five and five. And I, I don't know who that would go to. Maybe I would lean Amanda. Um, I'd probably lean Amanda like six out of ten times to be cyborg, uh, because again, like, I just wholeheartedly believe, you know, I, it wasn't necessarily a fluke. But they were both swinging, and in my opinion, when you're both swinging, you know, it just it kind of is like 50-50 chance, but she landed first, so, you know, great for her. And she obviously hits hard. So, um, yeah, I think they both have their strengths, and they both hit hard. They both could knock each other out. They both could submit each other. They both could win a decision. Um I'd probably lean Amanda, but I think it'd be really a lot more close than like, you know, 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, adjustments happen too. Like how many, you know, how many trilogies have been 3-0? and Like not that many. No. There's always a because of the decisions that people make differently and the mentality that you go into a fight with. So Very true. Uh, even if you're evenly matched, just, it really just comes down to, like you said, like, like I've been saying, like, what choices can I make that can best yours? Absolutely. Very, very good point. Uh, quickly, did either one of them feel stronger in the clinch? Because we only have a few minutes left. So just want to throw a few questions yeah. at you. Um, in the clinch, God, I don't really remember necessarily. I guess I had I had a lot more success with Cyborg um, getting her to the, to the fence, I'd say. And uh, maybe that was just, I was maybe more in the moment with the cyborg fight. Like, um, I'd, I'd probably say Amanda had a either either we weren't in that position as much because she knew maybe I wanted to be there and mm -hmm. that was her game plan to like, you know, stop what I want. Right. Uh, or or maybe yeah, I'd probably say Amanda was either better at it or better at avoiding it. Right. So, right. She yeah. could have been quicker, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Let me, in the last couple of minutes, ask your opinion on some upcoming women's fights really quickly. Um, is, first of all, are any of your teammates, either male or female, fighting in the UFC in any big fights coming up or any personal friends of yours or acquaintances? Uh, I don't have any. Not Currently, no other teammates at the gym are in the UFC. Um, I have, I have a, a, a friend that is also in Orlando. Hannah Goldie is fighting uh, Jessica Penney and 
the end of the month, I think. Something, yeah. Something coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> give, we'll, uh, give, me, give me a quick yeah. opinion on that, then I'm going to quickly ask you some higher profile uh, fighters. But uh, Hannah Goldie probably should put the beat down on Jessica Penne unless she just will, agrees to lay down right in Jessica Penne's guard or let Jessica <laughs> Penne get on top of her. That's probably a hard matchup for Jessica Penne, I would imagine, even though it's your friend, probably Hannah Goldie should win that fight. What do you think? You know, yeah, I think it's it, Jessica Penny is really good too. You know, she's very experienced and she's like scrappy. Um, Hannah's like very, she's, she's definitely like a technique oriented and but she's also a brawl. Like she can she can throw down. So I definitely see Hannah winning it. But it's a it, it's also like a big step up in comp. I don't want to say a big step up in competition, but like she's fighting a name bigger than her last any of her last opponents. So it's like a huge opportunity. I think more for Hannah than for Jessica. And I think it's, you know, Jessica's coming off of a two-year layoff, I believe. So, tough fight for her, too. Yep. Um, it's, yeah, it should be interesting to see, you know, um, how things turn out. But cool. I can definitely see, you know, Hannah's driven and motivated and super strong and technical. So, you know, I don't see any reason why she should lose. Yep, absolutely. She's having an nice. We'll cheer for her. Give me 10-second picks on these next ones. Uh, Macy Chasson this Saturday against Marion Renault. Oh man, that's a good one. Um, I like both of them so much. I'll say I'll say Marion because of her ground game, but I really like Macy too. Her and I actually fought as amateurs, so we have a that's right, you know, a cordial cordial relationship, and I really want her to succeed. So I want I want her to win, but I really like Marion too. Sorry, Sounds that's good. more intense. Sounds good. <laughs> good answer. How about uh, fellow uh, Invicta alum Miranda Maverick, who has been on our show? She is a nice girl. She is a strong girl like yourself. You probably might have some familiarity with her. Uh, she has been given the green light to find Jillian Robertson yeah. in her second UFC fight. I was saying, what the hell? Someone there must believe in Miranda Maverick. Uh, how do you yeah. how do you make that matchup even with one girl going into her so eighth or ninth fight? Do. What do you think? Yeah. It's so hard to do. I'm I'm friendly with both of them. Like I've hung out and trained. You know, I've uh, hung out with Miranda. I've uh, hung out with with Jillian more so with Miranda. But I've you know Jillian comes to Orlando a lot. She's Canadian. Like ah, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm gonna say Jillian. Um, I think I love both of them. I don't want to. <laughs> Todd is disagreeing. It sounds like, or whoever you're there with. Uh, he, he, uh, I'm, I'm like, maybe I'm just partly saying it because this is a Canadian show. <laughs> ah, there we go. I love it. There we go. The other Canadian, but, right? I'm to be biased, so. Um, yeah, sorry, Brenda. It's a Canadian show. I'm going to go with Jilly. I got gotcha. you. Definitely, definitely a good matchup. And then how about uh, Caitlin Vieira against Yana Kunitskaya? That's an interesting one, don't you think? Ooh, yeah. Um, I would go with the Caitlin uh, Vieira. Um, I think she's coming off a loss. I think they most, might both be. Or no, Yana, I think, just one. I think Caitlin was really close to a title fight. Like She's super high level and... Um, she lost to Aldana, but she's she's good. She's I think I could see her winning it. Absolutely, and I think that maybe the only is there one more, Doctor Anamorta. If you go a little bit back back up a little bit to maybe this weekend, I think maybe I might want to ask you one more. But I'll go to the back to the sixth. Back to the sixth. You're going down. You're going the wrong way. There we go. I appreciate it a little bit higher up. Even continue, and no, not that one. Um, I think we have the next card. The next card. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, how about, how about, uh, here we go. This one I'm really excited about. Break this down for me, even if it takes a minute. Macy Barber and Alexa Grasso. And a Grasso, I think, is, if this is either her first fight. No, this will be her second fight at Flyweight. Super exciting prospect. She just seems like another really nice person like yourself and so talented. And Macy Barber is a beast. She did get derailed a little bit by a really motivated Roxanne Modafferi. But how, do, how does that fight break down? Who do you think wins that? It'll be an exciting fight. It'll probably be mostly standing. Can you Alicia, are you there? She's not there. Oh, you should. Okay. 
right. Looks like we lost her. I want to see if we can get her back to wrap it up real quick. Yeah, we, we can try. Can we try? Let's try. And it's calling right now. <laughs> it's calling right now? Colleen. We're calling. Colin is calling. Hey, Felicia, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. No problem. We had a bad connection. But yeah, give us give us what you were saying because we only heard like a two seconds of it. Macy, Barbara, Alexa, Gross. Yeah. And that will be an exciting fight, too. Um, I'm going to go with Alexa. I think she's, I think Macy's a little, like, a little more, like, wild, not wild, but a little more wild, you know. And Alexa's, like, very straight down the middle, like, very technical. She's got great footwork. Um, she's really long. So even though she came up to flyway, I think she's probably still got the reach. And she uses it really well. Like, she's kind of like a Holly home, like a small Holly home, like, mm -hmm. She, she knows how to come in and out and use her reach and her punches and really extend all the way. So I think even if Macy tries to take her down or I think she's got, she's got good, you know, uh, takedown defense. Um, like you said, she, I'm always rooting for the, like, the one that just seems like a great person too. Like, um, so I'm, I'm rooting for her, but I also just think technically that she, she's going to go really far and, I can see her winning. Absolutely. And she is a really sweet girl. The last time I was there at a media day before the pandemic, she actually had like a little flower in her hair. She looked just like the cutest little sister that you could yeah. ever see, right? And here she is, a professional fighter, yeah. you know? So she's a cool person yeah. just like yourself. Well, Felicia, I really appreciate your time jumping on and sharing your thoughts with us and and uh, going over these picks with me and just answering all my questions. How can people support you on social media? What's the best play, place that people can show their love for you and, uh, and, and shout out and say hi? Um, you can find me everywhere at phenom479, so type my nickname there and and uh you know give me a shout or follow me and you can see all my dog pictures and my garden and my training and everything so. awesome i love it well at 30 you're right there in the center of your prime i think you're just right where you need to be and uh, i think a a getting better and better and that definitely should make the women at featherweight scared uh, would love to see it if Megan wins and then you come and destroy Megan and you're wearing UFC gold. Would love to see that. And I think it could very well, <laughs> it could very well happen. So you keep doing what you're yeah. doing, Felicia. I really appreciate you a lot. Well, thank you so much. I'm really hoping that that's what happens too. Uh, but again, thank you everyone for that's listening or watching. And thank you guys for having me on. You're very welcome. Have a great night. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.